What's up today? Not much, not much, nothing's happening really, the front line is stable, except for Ukraine broke through the Surovikin line. Yeah, you heard correctly, the Surovikin line, the first Russian defensive line, where in the last video I reported they have reached it, Will today, one day later, I am reporting that they have broken through and oh boy, I'm excited about it. I've done two days of a very realistic analysis of the Southern Front, but I will allow myself one day of pure happiness about what I'm seeing here. You see these black lines, the first ones, this is the second one, but the first one right in front of Verbova. Well, Ukraine today penetrated through it and not on a very small area, but actually an area wide enough to push through whatever they want. This black line here has an anti-tank ditch, dragon's teeth, an inventory fighting position, positions, anti-tank guided missile positions, heavy machine gun positions and trenches and Ukraine has passed it. Let's look at the proof. On this video you can see the Ukrainian 82nd Air Assault Brigade Infantry 1.6 kilometers beyond the Surovikin line. The infantry is not even on this yellow area on the fields that are newly liberated. This map doesn't even show it, but they're actually right here, just before the settlement of Verbova. Look on this one, you can see it better. Of course, it doesn't show the break here, it's an old map. But this is where the 82nd penetrated first and they have reached the very first houses of Verbova. And this is the geolocation photo proof. No pick, no proof, of course, and with this it's of an utmost importance. This is the very same video you saw. This tree, this tree and this tree have been, you know, circled. This is a different satellite photo and the photo is taken from this area about 300 meters from the first house of Verbova to the Ukrainian liberated site. This is where the 82nd were seen today morning. By now they might be fighting in Verbova in an urbanized area on the edge of the settlement. Great news for me, honestly. Now, I am happy, I'm joyful as you can see and I'm loaded, but I gotta bring some realism into it. Let's look at Verbova on a topographical map to see what is Ukraine facing against. See this road? Ukraine 82nd has been following this road straight into the settlement and as you can see Verbova is in a valley. Yes, usually these settlements are in a valley, hiding ground, this topographical map, I mean it's not huge mountains, but it's mountains enough, so if you put artillery positions facing into Verbova it's quite hard to take the settlement. What Ukraine I think is going to do is push the Russian lines, the Russian defenses back from the sides, and the Russians would have to pull back from the settlement itself also. There would be no point in going into Verbova doing this high casualty urbanized warfare if Russians have the high ground on both sides of the settlement. So I think Ukrainians will push back the Russians from the sides. That's my prediction at least. Let's look at which units do Russians have against the Ukrainian best 82nd brigade in this area. 3rd bars which is a reserve force, 11th bars which is also a reserve force. If I say reserve force with the Russian term it means these are mobilized, they're low motivation, minimal training. It is one of the weaker parts of the Russian defensive line because of the units they have here. They're not great units and Ukraine has the best one to face against them. 100 separate reconnaissance battalion 417th reconnaissance battalion so they have reserves and recon against the Ukrainian best 82nd brigade who penetrated through the Suroviki line I'm not gonna get tired of saying this and you gotta forgive me for being so loaded about it today tomorrow we'll go back to the extremely realist analysis of things but today I will allow myself one day of happiness. I've been waiting for this for so long. Now what I want to show you my friends, what makes me even more happy is the distance between these two lines. It is 9.5 kilometers, 9.5, 8, 10, it is, let's say it's 10 kilometers, so it's nothing. You zoom out, these two lines are quite close to each other. 82nd penetrated the first Suroviki line, they will penetrate the next Suroviki line. And after that, empty grounds, empty grounds. Yes, I have reported on these forest belts which are loaded with troops, but again, it is real. Yes, it's hard to clear out these forest belts, but they are as loaded depending on which units Russians have there. And if they have reserves, and if they have recon units, no air assault brigades, no infantry or mechanized infantry brigades, then these forest belts will be uh, manned with reserve troops. Low motivation, low morale, low training. So I'm looking forward for the 82nd of Ukraine to reach the second defensive line. And then we're talking Ocheretuvate, the biggest, closest Russian strong point to the front line right now. My friends, Igor Kirkin, Strelkov Kirkin is in prison. Everybody knows this, but what people don't know is that 
And I kid you not, this guy announced his candidacy for a Russian president in the next elections. Honestly. And I want to read you what is his promise to the Russian people. He posted this on his Telegram channel. I will read the whole thing to you. You're not going to regret it. Believe me. Bear in mind, this is one of the biggest Russian anti-Putin opposition leaders in prison right now after Prigozhin was killed. The balls on this guy. Whew. Let's read. Number one. The president refuses to lead military operations and considers himself incompetent in military affairs. I consider myself more competent in military affairs than the current president and certainly than the current minister of defense. Therefore, I could fulfill the duties of the supreme commander-in-chief as required by the constitution of the Russian Federation. So he says, Putin don't know nothing. He says, Shoigu don't know nothing. He's in prison. Iron balls, man. Number two. Our president is an extremely trusting person. For eight years, he was dragged by the nose, together and separately by Obama, Trump, Macron, Merkel, Poroshenko and Zelensky in Minsk and during the Normandy format in Istanbul and many other places. For my part, I can note since 2014, I have never called dear and respected partners those people who dragged the current president by the nose. On the contrary, I have never trusted them a penny. So... <laughs> He's, if you didn't know, he's fully trolling. Like, he announced his candidacy, but this text is as dark of a humor as can be. He can be killed any day now, and he's posting this like he doesn't care. Number three. The current president is too kind. When the special military operation began a year and a half ago, he was able to quickly make sure that he was being led by the nose, not only by the respected Western and Kiev partners, but also by the heads of our law enforcement agencies, intelligence agencies and the military industrial complex. It turned out that neither the country nor army nor the industry of Russia are ready for war. And the so-called Ukraine is not at all a straw man in military terms. Nevertheless, all the heads of the structures as well as others, for example, the central bank, remained in their places and continued to amaze us with their incompetence. So he says, President is too kind. He's allowing himself to be tricked. I'm not at all that kind, which I can prove in practice. If there would be a world champion award for trolling, Igor Strelkov Kirkin, the guy who looks so serious and sad all the time and knows he might be killed in any day, he would get it. Number four, it gets better and better. Our president has a lot of friends, billionaires and other businessmen to whom he cannot, due to the above mentioned kindness and generosity of soul, refuse anything. As a result, the export of capital from the Russian Federation continues. Military production is growing much more slowly than the capital of the president's friends is growing. I don't have a single friend who is even a millionaire. I have a hard time making friends who are entrepreneurs in general. I have a few friends and mostly they're all poor people. Accordingly, I will not have to give in to the wishes of my friends to the detriment of the Russian economy. So this Igor Strelkov is a, like this is genius. He's saying that he doesn't have friends in rich circles, which means he cannot be pressured by these friends because he will make sure he will fight for the poor regular Russian. This is what comes between the lines here. It's not over. Number five. Vladimir Vladimirovich is a highly moral person, always true to his word and firmly fulfills his promises given to those who brought him to power at the end of the dashing 90s. I didn't promise anything to anyone and therefore I can ignore all the personal guarantees of all the presidents of the Russian Federation from 91 to the present. I think that this is useful for the people and the state. Hey, I have no friends, I haven't promised anything to anybody, that means I don't have to break any promises. The irony is that Putin has broken all of them and he doesn't care. And now the last one, number six. I am not as athletic and healthy as Vladimir Vladimirovich was at my age, so I will not be able to bother you, dear voters, for more than 20 years purely physically. <laughs> so vote for me, I cannot be a dictator because I'm, you know, not in that great of a shape. Even if I suddenly have a desire to mess with you after the military period has been overcome the crisis and the, its most severe consequences. Thank you Igor Strelkov Kirkin for trolling the hell out of Russia's president, the entire military command structure and the entire 
political leadership of Russia. You, my friend, have balls of steel. My friends, I kid you not, a video was released of Prigozhin. Yes, the dude is alive? No, I don't think so, but uh, this video supposedly filmed before his death, like a little bit before he's still in Africa, and let's watch it, and you're gonna be messed up after, like, I don't know what to think of this. For those discussing whether I am alive or not, and how I'm doing, it's the weekend, the second half of August, the second half of August, I mean, dude was talking in the future tense already, like, when he was filming it, I guess he knew he was gonna be kaput, and he's like, Okay, I guess he has videos made about September, November, it's like, ah, oh, it's November and I'm still alive. 2023, I am in Africa, so fans discussing my death, intimate life, earnings, etc. I'm doing fine. Все порядке, I'm doing fine. If you're discussing if I'm dead or not, believe me, I'm doing fine. So, this guy, like, he's dead and may he rest in peace, but uh, I was a little bit sad that I cannot react to him anymore because he really... The, the charisma he has and the way he's a clown in front of the camera He comes back after even he's buried. I'm still reacting to this guy So I don't know if we we'll get rid of him. Did I mention you that the Ukrainians broke through the Surovikin line? Well in that in mind, let's look at the Russian losses of the past 24 hours 31st of August the last day of summer of 2023 610 liquidated personnel 13 tanks 8 armored personnel vehicles 31 artillery systems 1 MLRS, 22 UAVs, 26 cruise missiles, well, yeah, that's, these are sad ones because they went against Ukrainian targets, 23 vehicles and fuel tanks, and 5 special equipment. My friends, this is a photo of the Russian military airfield of Pskov, which is 300 kilometers from Tallinn, where I am now, where 4 Aleutian planes supposedly burned to the ground. Well, this is a confirmation satellite photo that, no, they didn't really burn to the ground, but they are seriously damaged. If those two planes here have serious damage right in the middle of the planes and it doesn't matter if you burn them to the ground or you damage them, they are off the production line, they cannot be produced more and the spare parts even are not produced. So these planes are off the fight for the remainder of this war, even forever I think. They're old planes, you damage them then you just, you gotta throw them away. So. They're gone. On this photo it's a zoom in, you can see, you, you don't fix that. You, with a plane you don't just, just cap the hole, you gotta fix the entire body. Same thing here, you can see these are the repairman vehicles, so yeah, these planes are gone. My friends, in this video I wanna show you a little bit of a human aspect of what the Ukrainians are fighting for. And I watched this video and it touched me really, because everybody has a grandmother, grandfather, if you're lucky at least. This grandson is going to see her grandmother for the first time after returning from the front and the grandmother hasn't seen him. She doesn't know if he's dead, if he's gone, if he's in prison in Russia. Let's see. Look, she's fainting, she's falling down, she doesn't know what to do. Cannot believe it's really him. But he's alive, he's back, he's fighting for freedom and country. I mean, this grandmother is old enough to remember the Soviet occupation, to remember even the Nazis. This is what the Ukrainians are fighting for, my friends. And my friends, now, I, it, there's a lot of reading today, but I have to read. These posts are priceless. You know, Prigozhin found an end, right? A loyal, loyal dog to Putin still found an end. Now the next one is Kadyrov, a strong man in Russia with a personal army. After Prigozhin, Kadyrov's personal army is the biggest. Akhmat forces, for example. He saw what happened to Prigozhin. He knows he might be next in line. Prigozhin was a warning to everybody who has some kind of a power that they shouldn't have or if they're thinking of being not so loyal anymore. So this is what Katurov wrote in his Telegram post and we can read some things out of it. I'll read it to you. Today I was amused by the musings of immature political scientists who are mad at Russia in foreign media that prophecy my demise in the near future, so that foreign media is prophesizing that I'm next. And I would say, yeah, this dude is next, maybe, uh, if he oversteps the line. Now he writes, I will not get tired of repeating it again, and I will say once more with great pride, I am an infantry man of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief of Russia, and I do not belong to myself, I belong to the religion, the motherland, and her interests, and I am ready to carry out any order by Vladimir Vladimirovich even if it results in my death. Yes, I might have a speedy demise when I found out there is someone more loyal than me in the issue of respect for our president, to whom, by the way, I owe my life, and not once 
but twice. Like he's reminding to the people and to Putin also like, I owe my life to you. Please don't kill me. I'm, I'm a loyal dog, please. You know, you can smell fear in this post. You can smell fear that I am next. I got to write something very cheesy and corny very fast. So Vladimir Vladimirovich wouldn't kill me, wouldn't blow up my plane. I'm sure also Kadurov now has food tasters and he doesn't want to fly for a little bit to see if Putin would make a move. Nobody around Putin is safe, no one is. Nobody knows when they are next. Putin is a enigma in the head. But he values loyalty, so as long as Kadyrov is loyal, he's fine. As long as he keeps making posts like this, he's fine. My friends, like in every video, I want to thank five new patrons for supporting this channel. Karole Strunk, Mark Jurski C, Tony Proke Juresko, Josep Jones. Kakstaist kuud, which in Estonian, pure Estonian means 12 months. And if, if you say it to American, how do you say 12 months in Estonia? He says kakstaist kuud. And that's, yeah, that's trolling. So we all Estonians know this joke. 12 months in Estonia. Yeah, look it up, search it up, study it. You're going to be a superstar here. Until my next video, my friends, stay cool and bye bye.